It's five minutes with me. My name is Marco, and <laughs> sorry, and you're listening to Five Minutes with me. We're talking about storytelling today. When uh, my two children were younger and spending time with my parents, their grandparents, they'd consistently ask for stories about me as a child or teenager. They'd ask for stories to be told and retold. When they stumbled onto one they hadn't heard before, they'd come in to me and ask me to retell it also. And there's more to this than the obvious surface stuff about finding out dirt on their dad. Hearing these stories helped my kids gain more of a sense of identity, connecting them to the lineage of their origin. The stories became part of who they are. The stories became their stories. Listen, throughout history, our current culture stands unique in its weird relationship with facts. Throughout history, though, truth has often been shared through story. In fact, education in Jewish households was more about storytelling than anything else. Before anyone had a copy of the Bible or Torah in their homes, oral histories, not even printed stories, let alone printed propositions, were the primary means of remembering who we are and remembering where we came from. Case in point, the Passover Seder dinner is all about storytelling. Each element of a Passover dinner is meant to call up another important element of God's great rescue, reminding the teller and listeners that who they are as God's chosen, as God's beloved. Of course, Jesus is a fantastic example for us in this. He was an amazing storyteller and often preferred a story, real or imaginary, over other forms of communication. Jesus knew that stories capture imagination. Stories allow listeners to find themselves in the character. Stories, especially the right ones, encourage, encourage us, uh, encourage us, as Lion King's Mustafa reminded his son Simba, to remember who you are. I love what Paul, in a fatherly voice, writes to young Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.5. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Paul doesn't unpack the stories here, but he reminds Timothy of stories Tim knows well and has heard over and over again his entire life, stories that tell him, remember who you are. Ministry people tend to be pretty good at storytelling with children when they're little, particularly telling stories from the Bible. But why do we stop telling stories with teenagers? Even though it might feel forced when you first try this, that's okay. Some level of uncomfortability is fine. Structure some sharing times that are built around stories, not checklists of facts. Storytelling, by the way, isn't only important for younger generations. Storytelling is beneficial for older generations also. In our culture of disposability and instant everything, stories provide an anchoring, a macro level, level picture of the values most important to us, values like obedience, obedience to God, courage, faith, hope, and love. 16 or 75 years old, we all need to be re-anchored in those values. Here's a handful of ideas for you to try. Host intergenerational storytelling dinners. Instead of br everyone bringing a dish to share, each person maybe would bring a dish also. Br they bring a story or a few stories to share, real stories, not made up stories. Give the categories ahead of time, just like you would for a potluck. Have them choose stories in two or three categories. Shoot for at least one person or couple from every generation. Allow for a Q&A after each story. Second, highs and lows. This one's probably familiar to you. My wife and I use this approach regularly during dinner with our teenage kids, and my middle school small group starts this way every week. Have each person share a story of a high point and a low point during their week. And to take this step further, add an ancient prayer element to this practice by together noticing where God was present in both the high and low moments. This is called the daily examine or Ignatian examine. Third idea, oral history recordings. Many teenagers are skilled at simple video editing on their phone. Challenge your teenagers to interview grandparents or older, other older relatives or just older people in your church about their stories of faith or even what life was like when they were younger. Film the interview and edit it into a short piece that they can show your group. Store them on YouTube or share them with other people from your church and community. And finally, tell self-deprecating stories from your own life. 
Whether you're speaking up front or leading a conversation with a group of teenagers, telling stories from your own life can be a major win. But I found the attention and impact skyrockets when it's a story from my childhood or teenage years, and particularly if the story provides some sort of laugh at my own expense. This normalizes the challenges so many of our teens are experiencing and humanizes you, which is helpful for building relationships of trust and safety. The Youth Cartel Podcast Network.